If you remember one of my past videos where I covered the NZXT Kraken Elite 240 and you've seen this AIO in the past video that I did regarding the NZXT products in general, H7 Flow RGB, we're having another AIO and this time it's a bit of an extended version of 240, we're having NZXT Kraken Elite 360 RGB which comes with a bigger surface for cooling and um, the LCD screen but that's the same thing as a 240 AAO and in general we have loads of other stuff that I'm not going to specifically go into details because you can see that in the NZXT Kraken Elite 240 RGB video which I will definitely link uh, at the end but there are some things like performance and visual aspects and what happens and whatnot. So regarding the 240 version I stated that the tubes sleeving was a bit flimsy and in this scenario it's much better at least in this model but there is still one tube going a bit flimsier than the other let's put it this way and I understand why we have a cable running through it so you basically only have the pump block top and the LCD screen mounted on the CPU on the motherboard without anything going out of it but then again I rather see, see a perfect fit on the sleeving and still see a visible cable through the tube or through the sleeving then a bit of a flimsier design on the tubing well basically in the sleeving and a little bit less of the cable you know what I'm going at I think you guys would understand what I'm trying to say because many manufacturers even though they have visible cables running from the pump block top don't get me wrong this is a really clean design but in this scenario this is much better than the 240 I had so that kind of goes into that segment but regardless of that it looks outstanding and to accompany the clean look and easy installation we have the f360 rgb core which is a triple fan set or one, three in one combo with three 120 fans in a single rack let's put it this way so we're having something interesting and I stated that at the 240 ra radiator video we have a new NZXT turbine pump that kind of gives a, a fusion of high pressure and high flow rate uh, which definitely you can see that with the liquid temperature even in the higher load it doesn't go that high then we go with the screen so we have ultra bright 272 inch IPS LCD with 640 times 640 resolution and 60 hertz refresh rate which gives you an option to personalize the screen with GIFs images system info web integrations and definitely much more but uh, you, you can see that from a close-up it really with it paired up with NZXT cam it gives you quite loads of information and you go with three up to three sensors even though Lian Lee can go up to four but in this scenario you have a possibility to see the temperature of the liquid which in sense of using this AAO for a longer period of time you can actually notice just because of I mean you can notice the same thing if the temperature of the CPU rises but you might spot this problem of, of oh, not all the liquid but uh, liquid not being cooled properly uh, if the liquid uh, tends to heat up a bit so then we go further with the block uh, we have the, this circle of light because the RGB LED ring around the pump cap uh, you can turn it into a color or basically just uh, synchronize it with the fans like I did or you can create it as a clock uh, image extension or anything else that you might find uh, interesting that would look cool in your PC and uh, mentioning the F360 RGB core it really makes it much easier to install it it in general it's quite simple when we're talking about the AMD installation process what you have is you have to remove the original brackets that are already placed you have pre-installed pre-applied thermal paste so you don't have to worry about that but you do have to worry about touching it while removing it's not difficult just be a bit slightly more careful so you have to remove the plastic cap covering the thermal paste then you have to slide out the top and the bottom part of the bracket for the intel and the same way place back the amd in those sense try not to touch the thermal paste just so you have equal coverage of the processor and then you have to remove the original retention brackets from the motherboard place uh, the four standoffs that are having two different uh, threads on each side so basically you can see which uh, one is going into the motherboard and which one is going to be covered with uh, thumb screws 
place the block on top of the processor which of course fits the standoffs and use four thumb screws to lock the uh, pump block top on the processor it's simple as that the only thing that what i stated at the nzxt cracking elite 240 and 360 we have that connector that is definitely looking like an additional cube so what you get here is a specific proprietary cable that connects between the tubes and in some sense this AAO can't be used in certain cases because maybe it doesn't fit because of the tubing that's for all AAOs but maybe it doesn't fit because of that part even though it doesn't stick out from the thickness of the fans which is good and they thought about it and that's okay but for other things i'm not quite sure and i can't say for 100 percent guaranteed that in some cases it might not fit i'm presuming now okay but what you get is let's say a third tube running in the middle of those two and you have sata connection which basically powers up everything then you have three pin dc for speed for the pump then we have there, uh, I think it's 8-pin proprietary cable that connects the F360 uh, uh, RGB core fans directly to the pump and everything all together. And finally, we have USB 2.0 going directly down to your motherboard. Now, the USB 2.0 is used to communicate the fans, the AAO and uh, the pump all together with the NZXT cam software where you can regulate the speed, where you can regulate the colors, where you can regulate the LCD and everything all together, which is quite nice. And I do have to say, now, this was quite easy to install. I do have to admit, apart from being a bit more careful for the thermal paste, but mounting the F360 here in 240, you didn't notice that that is definitely not noticeable. But when you mount the 360, you have two screws on one end and two screws on the other end. What happens here, if you tie up the screws too much, you'll have a bit of a, you see it a bit here dent. And it's because only if you tie up the screws too much, what I actually did, maybe one or two turns a bit too much. And then what happens is, is a bit of a warp. That's a proper uh, word for this scenario. It warps right here and it bends. It doesn't bend, it just goes a bit down because of the weight and because you push the sides upwards, but the middle part kind of stays in that position. So yeah, that's what I would, would like to point out, apart from the RGB line here that really needs more light, really needs more light. I'm digging the F core RGB in general, when we're talking about grouping the fans all together, having a single cable running out, that's quite outstanding. But if you place LED RGB here, just make it pop quite nicely and not use the LEDs from the middle part of the fan motor because it won't light up properly. In general, I'm quite satisfied with most of the stuff because the performance is quite solid. That's important. The LCD screen is outstanding, specifically with the details, the pixels and um, basically the colors and the movement, 60 hertz as well. And it's really impressive. I do have to admit that but then we go and compare price to performance and before i go with the price tag we're going to go with performance so we're having nzxt h7 flow rgb i placed uh, two well one comes uh, on the front but you have one at the bottom the f360 uh, rgb core and one of course on the aao this is N7 B650E with AMD Ryzen uh, 9 7900X3D. The GPU in this scenario is totally irrelevant because I covered that in the case review. But here we go. CPU in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition goes up to 84 degrees. Clock speed 4800 MHz. GPU goes up to 65, but you already seen that and it's totally irrelevant for this point. But just to praise the case once again, outstanding case. Now we go with Cinebench. The thermals on the CPU from 79 to 80, it varies quite a lot. So I would say an average is 79.5 on the thermals uh, on the CPU. And that's outstanding, I do have to admit. Then we go with clock speed. Majority is 4975 and only one is 5000. But in all of these 4975, we actually see a peak at 5000, 5025, eventually going 4950. But, you know, the average. And then when you take everything into consideration, the Cinebench scores, 26,210, it starts there. Second run is 26,400 and I thought this is going to keep at that but it just jumps down and i would say an average is 26350 now this is outstanding score don't get me wrong for a 360 radiator 
that's brilliant. But the price for this one and what I noticed uh, the other day is $329 or euros. I could, it doesn't really matter because in both currencies, it's a bit too much. And I'll be honest, it performs solid above average without a doubt. It looks outstanding without a doubt. The pump block top, the, the LCD screen is brilliant. And I'm really digging the communication with NZ NZXT cam in general. So it's good integration in general with the whole NZXT ecosystem. It's outstanding. The connection part, apart from the cable, it's really straightforward and you don't have to worry about anything not working in that sense. It just plug and play. You're done with it. Fan on top. I mean, I placed the curve to be dead silent until 80 degrees. So if it's 79, it's dead silent. And if it's 80, of course, it's going to spin up because I placed it to go on 100%. But as you, as you saw in the graphs from 79 to 80, on 79, it was dead silent. On 80, it was running at maximum speed, which was around 2400 RPMs, but you don't get uh, the decibel range uh, on their spec sheet in general. And then you take the price. To be honest, we have many other AIOs on the market that perform the same, but they are cheaper. But you don't get this triple fan set. You don't get this crazy LCD screen. You don't get the full NZXT ecosystem. In that sense, I understand. In other sense, price per performance doesn't make sense whatsoever. So I think I gave you enough information when we're talking about that. In general, I'm satisfied with the performance once again, but the price is just not there. 220, I would even go with 250 just for the premium price and premium brand. And, uh, in general, everything that you get uh, inside with the package, uh, the LCD and everything uh, there is, but the price is just not there. And I'm really sad about it because it's a great product. It's a really great product. So if you're going with full NZXT setup and if you don't mind the additional budget that you had to spend on the uh, AIO, just go for it. I can't stop you and nobody can. It's your opinion, it's your money and you stick with it. But if you're on tight on a budget and if you really want to go with something else, you can definitely go with some other NZXT crack and that is an Elite that still has an LCD. It's much cheaper and you still have an option to go with full NZXT ecosystem, save up some bucks and maybe invest in RAMs, SSD. Eventually, maybe if you're missing that $100 for a better GPU, why not? So yeah, that's it. Thumbs up for the performance, thumbs down for the price. And that will sum up everything uh, for today's video. If this uh, gave you some insights about everything and in general, some thoughts about AAO, NZXT Ecosystem, NZXT Cam, NZXT Kraken Elite uh, 360 RGB, you can check out the links in the description or you can also subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell. And for more details about the turbine pump and everything all together, check out the video after this. Thanks. Bye-bye.